Welcome to this episode of Q&A with Liturgy Man. I'm Taylor Burton Edwards, Liturgy Man with Discipleship Ministries of the United Methodist Church. I'm your apportionment dollars at work to help you strengthen worship and the understanding of worship where you are. Today's question kind of follows up on last week's, and that is, what is the purpose of the season after Epiphany? What do we do during those months, typically in January and February, uh, between uh, our conclusion of Christmas season, and it's 13 days ending with Epiphany itself, and then the beginning of Lent on Ash Wednesday? What's the agenda for that time in the church year, and how do the lectionary readings help support that agenda? Well, the agenda for the season after Epiphany is to help the church get ready for its work during Lent. The work of the church during Lent is to walk with people on a journey toward either deepening their commitment to the baptismal covenant or committing to live the way of the baptismal covenant for the first time. Lent is this season that we might call a season of midwifery, of walking alongside this new life that is preparing to be born in people or being preparing to be uh, gestated, if you will, to grow into a deeper place of commitment to Christ, either in preparation for baptism at Easter or perhaps confirmation or some deeper step in life and ministry that people are preparing themselves to take as they seek to grow in faithfulness to the vows of the baptismal covenant. So that's Lent. The season after Epiphany is there to help congregations get ready to do that work during Lent. And so there are two different ways that the lectionary supports that work depending on what the congregation may need to do in any particular year. The Old Testament and the Gospel are always chosen to relate to each other during this season after Epiphany. And what happens in those readings consistently, that is between baptism of the Lord and uh, transfiguration, is that these are readings that are inviting people to come and see what the Christian life might be about. There are an opportunity for the church to do some basic work of evangelism and start cultivating the possibility of new life in Christ for folks perhaps who have not considered it before, or at least who have not considered doing that with you and in the form of baptismal covenant that we seek to live out together. And so this is an opportunity. These, these, weeks, these weeks and these readings are an opportunity to help support that ministry of evangelism at this time of the year, after Christmas season is over, before Lent begins. That's one way you can get ready to do that work of getting ready. Start to cultivate people who might, that you might be accompanying then on that Lenten journey uh, together. The other uh, approach, and this is what the epistle lesson consistently does in these three years, in the three-year cycle of the lectionary, is there may be issues inside your local congregation that need to be addressed before you can actually do that preparatory work. So this is kind of a time, instead of looking at evangelism and outreach, it may be a time to do some more internal work. And if what your church needs to do is the internal work, that's what those epistle readings are there to help you do. I would suggest that as you think about this season, you look at which of those two is going to be the better approach for you, and then you pick the single track that you need to follow to get that work done. Do you need time to work on some things internally? Then focus on the epistle reading. Do you Are you ready to go ahead and do some, some good evangelistic work in the coming weeks? Then Use those readings from the Old Testament and the Gospel to help you get ready for Lent by building a cadre of people who may then continue in that journey toward baptism or toward deeper commitment to Christ in the context of your particular Christian community. Hope this has been helpful. Remember, you can always contact me, worship at liturgyfolks.com, through our UMC Worship Facebook group, or drop a line on this page. 
and perhaps your question or comment will become the basis for a future episode of Q&A with Liturgy Man. May the peace of Christ be always with you.